I was doing some studio repairs when I heard a voice. It was my friend Matthew. I haven't talked to him in a long time, so I wasn't sure what he wanted. Hey Ben, good morning and greetings from Stockholm. You know, I was thinking back to when we were consultants more than a decade ago, running around doing Tableau. Around the world, solving Tableau challenges and helping people see and understand their data. Well, I work for Tableau now, and I still believe it's the greatest tool out there for seeing and understanding data. So you've been going on about how great this, I don't know, Ben saw on GPT.com or Excel AI thing is. So I put together just a few basic analyses that are easy to do in Tableau, and let's see if you can recreate those. If you can't, you need to go on record swearing that you love pie charts, particularly 3D exploding pie charts. How's that? What if I fail? I hate pie charts. Can I even do this? It's been so long since I've done DataViz in Excel. Then it happened. The data and the charts came into my inbox. Okay, first let's look at the data. Okay, uh, this is Superstore. We've got sales, we've got products, we've got quantity, discounts. Okay, now let's take a look at the first chart that he sent. Okay, we've got a running sum of sales. Each line is a month. It's just 2023, and it looks like day of month for the bottom. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so I have order date, but I'm going to have to create some formulas here. Okay, I've got what I need, I think. Insert, pivot chart, got it. We're going to do day of month on here. This is going to be sales for the values and label as the series. And let's get rid of chart type line. Got it. Let's filter to year 2023. Got it. Okay, we're getting better. Let's make this chart bigger. Let's get rid of this box here. And we want to do a running total. So I'll do field settings, show values as, no calculation, running total. Bang, here we go. Okay, that's the first chart. I think this is gonna be good. I'm gonna add some labels and I think we're, we're there. But now for the second one. Okay, second chart. This is product subcategory. The past three months, I'm reading down below, color by percent difference in sales. So we're seeing sales for the bars and then we're seeing the colors, the percent difference in sales from the previous month and then just the top 10. I don't even know how to, how to begin because you can't do uh, a matrix of charts, small multiples, trellis charts, whatever they're called in Excel, it just doesn't work. Okay, but wait, ChatGPT can do charts as well. Let's see if I could just use ChatGPT. All right, let's start, let's load the data. Okay, it's working. All right, that's not quite what I'm looking for. All right, let's try that again. Oh, there's gaps in the data, what am I gonna do? Well, we'll just ask it to fill in the gaps. Okay, there we go, I think that's level one. So we've got level one Excel and ChatGPT. Let's just go ChatGPT for level two as well because I don't know how to do that in Excel. Okay, I need three bar charts for the past three months with the colors by percent and categories as subcategory. Okay, let's get a different color palette here. All right, let's get one from Color Brewer. We're almost there. Okay, challenge number two in the books. I think we're doing good, but before we're number three, I've just been at this for hours. I need a break. <laughs> Okay, back in the studio, we're on to number three here. I don't even know what to do with this here. It looks like a scatter plot, but he's highlighted a few things and called it nine box analysis. I don't even know what that means. So I went to our Slack channel for FTD members and I found someone that was able to help me. So I'm gonna go meet up with them at a coffee shop now.
I waited at the coffee shop for over 30 minutes and he never showed. Let me go back to the studio and see if I can figure this out. Okay, back in ChatGPT and it looks like I broke it. It looks, what is going on? It's not, it keeps failing. It can't display it. Okay, it can export the code and then I can run it on my laptop. Okay, let me head over to PyCharm and I'm gonna figure this out. Okay, that's it, I got it. Or at least I got part of it. The labels, I don't know. Okay, it's moment of truth. I'm about to hop on the call with Matthew from Tableau and we'll see how this goes. Are you ready for the big reveal, sir? You sent me some challenges oh my gosh, and so I feel I feel like I stepped up to the task. Now, I, I all I'm looking for here is your obvious praise and validation of how yes. great I still am at this, even oh, yeah. though it's been so long. Uh, but also that that I no, do not have to profess my love for pie charts. So you had sent me, or you sent me, level one. Level one. You could say it's odd, but the interesting thing here is the the trends that you see in spend throughout months. So November has this like big spike right at the end. Yeah. Your post Thanksgiving shopping and so on. And then February, everyone's doing nothing. Nobody nothing. wants to leave the house in February. So what do you think about this? Just your first glance here. I mean, that looks like the same chart and the same insight. I, I, I miss the index saying like by the 10th day of the month, you know, mm -hmm. this is what it looks like versus by the 20th day, this is what it tends to look like. Right. Um, so I miss that access labeling that's there. Yeah, okay, okay. But the insights are the same, right? You see the basically the back third of the year is where you make all your revenue. My trusty assistant in ChatGPT actually generated this one as well for us and it looks more Ew. like this. So that's similar. Is it indexing by the the month or the month and year? Month it's and year. 2023. Right. Okay. It's not labeled. Uh, I didn't include that in the label, okay. but the colors of the labels do match, which I thought was kind yeah. of clever. I told it to basically fill in the gaps of the days. And so if right. February has missing days because it only has so many days, it just drew a straight line. So what do, you, what do you think about this one? I think this is pretty impressive, actually, that you can get this from just description. Level one, I think we passed. Would you agree? Yes. You passed, Ben. That's awesome. Level two. Here's the weird thing about Excel, and I don't know if you, how long ago you were doing this stuff in Excel, but these are separate charts. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Does not exist right. in, in Excel. Okay, so there's no sense of like relative, because actually what I did in mine that may not have, I probably didn't mention is, it's, it's always the latest three months. So it filters Correct, the most yeah. recent four months and displays the most recent three so that you can get your month over month. So how okay. do you feel about this one and how, how close like, or how um, off? It's not dynamic. The continuous color ranges are missing. I mean, I think it's an eight, or eight out of 10, seven out of 10. You passed, a seven is the best. My assistant um, came up with something. Here was the first version I did. Okay. Trying to get it, all the data is correct. The colors obviously were different, but I felt pretty good about this, honestly. Yeah, again, if your insight you're looking for is phones are declining, you don't really get that with this color palette, but you do get that binders mm -hmm. are big and dwell. Chairs are big yeah. and dwell. That's the, the key insight. And Pretty then good. I tried to match the color palette you had. I don't know. Tableau just has a thing with colors that is so good. You know, shout out to I uh, Marie probably... Stone and the other researchers, yeah. right? That, that put a lot of work into those color palettes and the way that we perceive different ranges of the color palette. This is, you know, this is what I'm talking about. It's the, it's the science behind Tableau. It's yeah. More impressive. So how do you feel about uh, about level two? H how do we do? Did we passing? It failing? For chat GPT? Oof. Um, but the analysis is correct. Numbers are correct. That's already got to get you at least a five. And yeah. the color palette, uh, takes away from seeing and understanding the data. Uh, if yeah. I were to look at this, I would think, you know, phones are growing. So now they're not if six and a half. Ben, six and a half is like a D plus. Level three. So I'll just say, I, I could not get the highlighting like you do, of course. That's as good as I got in Excel. I mean, um, there's, I think, a bit of a loss of insight, for sure. Um, so what happens if you select a bunch of those marks? Well, you can select series of marks. So I can't, re like I can select you like one. like freehand lasso like I did? No. Or even a square? Nope. 
Nope, there's nothing. No, as far as I, I know in Excel, someone's gonna probably watch this and yell at me, but no. I still get emotional about it. Just no! Because the thinking I had here was like a, you know, kind of nine box style. I say, this is the stuff that's kind of the center. Show me things that are outliers in each of these axes, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and that gives you your, you know, multi, I mean, squadron's the wrong word, but it's a, it's a nine box analysis. Yeah, nine box analysis. I don't even know what that means. And it's, yeah. uh, you, you can, I. Coming this fall, nine box analysis. Yeah, I didn't go into this in my explanation, but I actually used a set action. So the values you here, but just pass fail. How do you feel well, about this one? This feels like maybe a four. Seriously, Ben, a four. My assistant at ChatGPT ran some stuff for me. I, I couldn't get the labels, but I did throw in some clustering for you. Well, you know, it's funny. I was asked recently by a colleague, hey, one of our differentiators forever has been that we can just display unlimited marks and we do all kinds of optimizations. Tableau draws this in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine that a large language model not being optimized for that would struggle. But how, how do you feel about this one compared to, or compared to the one you sent over just in terms of Well, so you there's know, what no you're interactivity. Getting at the numbers right? are correct. You got no labeling. It's 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 pretty close to Excel. You can do clustering, but there's no ability to like interact with it. So I think if you could converse with this and go, cool, select everything with a sales of between 10 and 15,000 and the profits between 0 and 2,000. Mm -hmm. And tell me what I can learn about everything that's outside of those in the Y axis, up or down, X axis, and then both, full corner. Maybe if you asked it that next question, which is kind of what you're doing when you select, yeah. Yeah. maybe you could get there. That would be interesting. Okay. Okay. So, so as it is before, about the same as Excel. Okay. So now it's time for the results of the challenge to see if Ben passed or if he did not pass at all. Well, Matthew, you sent me a challenge. I, I did my best. You're the judge here. Uh, did I pass? Fail? Do I love 3D pie charts or no? Well, you know what they say. Second place is uh, the first loser. So no, <laughs> I, I think you got close on some of them. I think in terms of matching the capabilities of Tableau, it's not a pass. Right. How would, you, would you agree with that? Totally fair. Um, what about the charts, though? You know, how close were they? Were they enough to be satisfactory? The first if you two were... for sure. The first two okay. for sure. The third one missed all the quadrant analysis, which is the whole point. Um, yeah. But it just, just plotted the scatter plot, which is easy. Um, but the, the first two, very close. Like, I think the analytical richness was there, even if the display was not as good, um, or it was very close to being there. Uh, the third one, I think, is where we missed out on the analysis, never mind the interactive. So, so if that's a pass on two out of three, that would be a 66%, which I don't know what it was passing in your school when you were a kid. But for me, well, I think we're, so I think we passed grad students. It's definitely not as good as Tableau. De definitely not as good as Tableau. Obviously there, that's that. I don't think that's in question here. I think but also two out of those three, your love for 3d exploded pie charts. <laughs> so I think we passed. Just barely, but certainly Tableau is the better tool for this stuff. But on the other hand, I think ChatGPT really held its own and Excel, as great as Excel is, is just a really tough thing when it comes to creating these really immersive data visualizations. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong about that. But thankfully, because I passed, I don't have to profess my love of pie charts publicly. I can just keep that a secret between you and me here and no one else has to know, okay? So don't. Don't, don't tell anyone about that. But next, I need to see what Power BI can do. So stay tuned for more, subscribe down below, and hang on because this is gonna be a fun series. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here in the next one.